see you all again. Well, this week, I still won't be finishing up the uh, chronograph test with the 25 caliber since it kept, it hits the backstop so hard, it knocked it over and broke one of the legs on the chronograph's tripod. It was crimped together inside. I don't know. I have to figure out how I can, if I can fix that. Besides, I got some 2x12s. There's some other one where I need to make a, a shooting bench table and then put a couple 2x12s together with some legs and stuff to make a table with some eyelets for bungee cords to, to strap the backstop down to. So I'm using it at close range for chronograph tests that the impact of those 25 caliber pellets aren't going to keep knocking it over. Well, 25 caliber is a quarter inch diameter projectile. And at being just under 20 grains to just over 31 grains on average, that is a big heavy pellet and it's going to knock the snot out of something. And every once in a while, in fact this was the first time I do to take the backstop apart, a Staples Economy storage box as I've showed you in earlier videos. Uh, I took out all the, all the, the old, uh, well I've got four one inch thick pieces of pink hard styrofoam insulation material I put in the back with about that much junk mail compacted down inside the box, pasteboard, uh, you know, cars with it, trying to get you to vote or from restaurants or whatever, and uh, including credit cards I don't want, and just all kind of junk mail uh, all packed down inside there and I take out the, the once it's been shredded by grouped pellet poles uh, it's you got a lot of confetti and smashed pellets and tore up mail and junk in there it's making holes through it that's eventually gonna let it go shoot right through into the wall and pissing off Swimbo and we don't want that so I dug and dug and dug and dug all these pellets out of all that darn thing and it's rather interesting with the gamma rockets. One thing that the gamma rocket is interesting to me that it's actually got a BB, a copper plated BB in the tip of it. Now, you go to Gamma's lethal pellet, the pellet with the, the black polymer skirt, that's a copper ribbon, dome headed ribbon in there. It's completely different. So I think they came up with the lethal pellet second. And they get in the, the gamma rocket first. The rocket uses a BB, and the, you've got a dome headed copper rivet in the center of that lethal with the polymers in, in the side of the polymer skirt. Anyway, uh, I'm going I'm to put up a frame of some a random sampling of pellets I took out of here, the various ones I shot H&M uh, Barracuda Green and the uh, Gamo Platinum PBAs that look like a, the Barracuda Green, only it's shorter, but they're both like zinc alloy. Them things don't deform a lot, so you're going to get a lot of penetration out of those. Even though they're lighter than lead pellets, they don't deform very easily. I don't know if you can see this in here. Check that out. You can see some of the, the longer Barracuda Greens, uh, Platinum PBAs, and various other lead pellets from H and N, J, J, JSB, and all of that. And I don't know if you can. Here is an H and N Silver Point, the one I, I mentioned on in the, in the Facebook Airgun pages that looks to me like a pellet version of a mini ball. It's a mini bullet, but they call it a mini ball. I don't know. But yeah, here's the 25 caliber lead one. It must have hit some some plastic credit cards and some of the other wads of lead pellets. They made little wads balled up about that big between the holes, of the whole the grouping hole it made in the in the stopped envelopes and whatever hell, whatever it stopped actually stopped in. Another pellet hits it, and that 25 cal. 
just got smashed pretty good. There's the front. I don't think you can see that real good, sorry. I'm trying to get my light bulb fingers out of the way so y'all can see what I'm seeing. And here's this, looking at it from the bottom, looking up into the skirt. And here is a near intact platinum PBA from Gamma. Okay. You can tell because it's shorter. And here's the longer, and I dropped it. You're shaking a little. The longer uh, H&M Barracuda Green. Hitting all that plastic and packed up mail and other wads of pellets and, you know, like I was saying before, nearly intact. So you can imagine what this thing's going to do to a, to a small, game, small game critter, even, even a, a pig. I would definitely use the Barracuda Green or the Platinum PBA on, on small feral pigs. Them damn things just don't want to deform, and a pig's skull is not very thick. We used to use 22 shorts and an old bold, long barrel bold action in the butcher shop to kill the pigs and stuff. Popping in the head, and that the, the short would stop down the base of the neck someplace. Longer, longer, I found it. You'd find the, you, you shoot it in the top of the head, find a bullet down around it, its belly button, or a little further south, believe me. They got, they're, they're like, pigs are like cows and, and whatnot. They, they got big, heavy bone legs. Well, yeah, you got this big, fat-ass critter that's got a support. But the head, well, <laughs> I think God skimped a little on the head. The brain on a pig is only about that, that you're going to shoot for, for dinner or put in your the big rectangular barbecue pits like I got. The brain's about as big as my fist. Not the sharpest tool in the shed, and, but they are very skittish. Once so much as one little whiff of your ass, and he's gone. And I mean right now. So you see Keith Warren, all those guys using that pump spray bottle as scent killer stuff? Buy one and use it. Believe me. They got a bigger snoop, stronger smell of snoop than, than deer, They're, which are, and deer could smell pretty good, but the pig could smell a lot like, a, could scent a lot like a wolf. Or a dog, or you know, it, it, I'll tell you what though, it's surprising to me. Just like they said, Jurassic Park, I looked it up in there, right? The longest, the furthest, furthest scenting animal in nature is a turkey buzzard, you know, vulture. They can scent for 10 miles in flight. Just like sharks can smell blood in the water, for God knows how long with that big pig snoot. You want to talk about porkers, Mr. Hoover? But, that just kind of shows you what happens to various pellets, lead alloy design-wise and everything. Because you're not just looking at the, out, the design of it outside, where you see what happened to these here. I mean, some of them are smashed flat, especially the beam and silver bear. That dang thing looks to me like it's, it, it's they're a little lighter, but they also smash easily. So it's going to dump a lot of it's foot pounds of energy it's carrying at the point of impact or as I say it's going to dump a lot of FPE at POI and these these the alloy platinum PBA and and uh, barracuda green good penetration some of the lead ones the gamma rockets I say would be, I say would be second so the Platinum PBA and uh, Barracuda Green, that zinc alloy and that point, that domed point really works well for maintaining its shape going way in, in, into uh, whatever you're shooting at. So that's my opinion on, on that. And uh, I'm, I'm really interested to see what my my old Crossman uh, 160 Pell gun is going to do at the range because that thing I got it up up to uh, 660 feet per second from the factory 500 feet per second with uh, Gamma Platinum PBA 9.7 grain, which is rather odd. 
because I got 650 out of the uh, Barracuda Green 12.65 grain, which in 22 caliber equals the weight of the Beeman Silver Bear, which shoots slower in, in how did that go again? It shoots slower in the Crossman and faster in the Hot Sound than the Barracuda Green or something like that. It's faster in the Beeman Silver Bear. It's faster in one one of my 22s than the other, compared to the to the Barracuda Green. Really odd. But anyway, I think Keith Warren's right. That Gamma Rocket with the BB in the tip and natural lead. Just the way it's designed, that BB in the head just gives it good penetration, although the BB will go further than the skirt sometimes. Because I found about 12 BBs loose from the head of the, the Gamma Rockets in my backstop there, just from chrono test. And, uh, but I'm going to tell you what, that 25 caliber uh, trail. NP XL 725 is one hard hitting some bitch. I would definitely recommend that one it, for coon hunting with a, a, a illuminated reticle scope, for instance, or that little uh, clip on thing. Looks sort of like a long handled uh, scope mount. It's got some of them have picking any rails or pick a tenny, whatever the hell you call it. Um, either side so you can mount other things to it besides the light, a little light in the center with a filter. Uh, even a black light, I think black light filter would be good because it, it'll make their eyes light up or if they, they bare their teeth, which would be really stupid. Then you could see, you'd get a better idea of where the rest of their head is. Think about that for a minute. Uh, anyway, once I get the, the a bench rest shooting table built and a backstop table built to, to strap that backstop down, we can start the crony test again. I found another way to use that broken tripod since it's, it's got three section legs, just the middle section on one leg broke, so if I can't crimp it, then I'll just work around it somehow so we can get, get some numbers to... Uh, I don't think of it. I wonder if I've got I uploaded all of those off my phone here. I'm pretty sure I did. I was trying to fix a glitch in the program. Mm, see groups. Nope. Not a. Not a. <coughs> okay. Anyway, I'll. Let me turn on the computer and see if I can dig you out some numbers. I know I got that here somewhere. Oh, I, I, by the way, I did find a way to save all, all the information that the, the, the phone app picks up from the chronograph itself into to a, to my email and then, then took snippets with the snipping tool of that to save it as a JPEG. So that way I could, I could just print it for you guys to look at as a picture. Well, anyway, I'll have to, I'll have to find a misplaced it. Might even have to do it again for the H&M uh, Silver Point. It's interesting to me whether it's Beeman or Yunjin, I think is the, how you say the Japanese one, or h &M or whatever. They all basically are using the same names, uh, like the, the Silver Bear, the Crow Magnum, uh, Silver Point, etc. They all use the same name. And some are alloys, some are lead, and you know all that sort of thing, where the, the weights differ, besides different carrying across different calibers and everything. I just like the Silver Point because it looks like a pellet version of a mini ball. Or mini bullet, maxi bullet, you know, you got black powder guys know what I mean. But it's been about eight, eight weeks now since I 
had my left hip surgery and I'm able to walk a little further now than I did before, but I'm still using the, the walker, you know, with the wheels on the front and everything. I can get up and down stairs with a cane. So I think if I put my gun, use a gun on my shoulder strap, with a shoulder strap, say over my left shoulder, I have a small knapsack to carry extra pellets in and skin and knives or, you know, whatever you would take hunting with you. Besides having my camis, so you have a camouflage, uh, Mossy Oak Infinity, or Mossy Oak Country, whatever the hell they call them. I've seen about four different names. Uh, shirt with, say, some loose-fitting bib overhauls in the same camel pattern. I could fit over my clothes so, so I could say that in warmer months I'm, I can wear cargo shorts and a camouflage shirt, let's say, and then just put the bibs on over that. And my my vest here, and this is a military one by Humvee, by the way. Or find one in mossy oak, mossy oak pattern that fits better, you know. It's old, I was skinnier in those days, but that's another story. So uh, basically I can have clothes I'm not sweating in, but also uh, breathes so it doesn't build up sweat that the animal can smell so that you don't you don't get sweaty uh, some call it scent black or the other ones that scent something I, I don't have it hanging here to it's pretty much a sleeve Cabela's and Gander Mountain places like that sell these things um, some of you hunters will know what I'm talking about and uh, this week I'm gonna I'm gonna Get to see if I can find my circular saw and get some two by twos. And I got a couple of two by twelve uh, ramps I'd made for getting my tractor up in a small my father-in-law's little pickup truck to get it, take it and get it fixed and junk. And don't need to do that anymore. So I got some wood to play with. I can also oh I want to also show you guys something I almost forgot. I got one of these two by twelve ramps that's in, that's in better shape than the other with fewer not knots and everything being pine fur or whatever you know i'm gonna make with my circuit saw and my dremel and a router bit i'm gonna show you guys how to make a couple of cutting boards to replace those wooden those wooden slats on either side of your rectangular barbecue pits or the barrel ones where you got the you know it looks it has the slats on either the things that stick out on either end like uh, like the slats on a park bench or something we're going to take the, those are, a lot of those are rotted and fall off or fell off over the years anyway. So I'm going to make a couple of real nice cutting boards with routed drip rails. And I found, I have to, I have to dig it out of my, out of my links folder. It's in one of the folders where they got this, this stuff that is cloudy, sort of like French polish or something that you use on cutting boards when you're making cutting boards to seal them with that's uh, okay to use with food stuff, long story short. I can't remember the name of it offhand. Once I dig that out, I'll see if I can, I can post the link to that. And we'll have, a, we'll have a video where I'm out there fixing the barbecue and make those cutting boards. That's gonna be really handy for when you're if so, those of you that like to that, that shoot uh, pigs and deer and you know whatever a moose or something and you got this big chunk honking chunk of meat like I like to do is to pit barbecue a big piece of meat for hours and then my wife is in the kitchen making veggies and the cornbread or biscuits or you know whatever to go with it and we'll show some of that I want to start working on that and since I live in Loring County, Ohio, uh, one, of the, one of the counties that, in northeast Ohio, northeast Ohio that borders Lake Erie and all that, on well, the south central part of Loring County, those things are nesting. I used to have to go all the way down around Dayton and uh, about two, two or three counties uh, south of Holmes County where Berlin, Ohio is and the Amish and Shakers and all that sort of, them sort of folks. Well, I don't have to do that anymore. South Central Lorraine County, and it's got public access. Church Hayden. I want to, I'll take this camera I'm using here at the tripod, the Canon Power Shot. I'd rather not, I'd rather have like a headband with a GoPro. You know what I mean? So when I'm going like this with the 
to aim the gun with the scope and you can sort of see over the scope and down the barrel of it get a rough idea of what I'm what I'm looking at and aiming at. I thought that might be, be a, a different cool sort of angle you guys might like. I don't know. So you have, you have to let me know about that in the comments. What you think and that's what we'll do. And I guess that's about it for this week. So good Lord willing the creeks don't rise. We'll see you again. <laughs>